from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, India is a spellbinding mosaic of cultures, traditions, languages and an extraordinary mingling civilization. Keeping its age-old culture maintained, today the country is taking huge strides on the path of development. Namaskar viewers, welcome back to another episode of My India. I'm your host Pratiksha Mishra and in today's episode, we're gonna offer you a glimpse into India's cultures, diversity along with the developments happening in and around the world. The enriching history and the unique culture of India's Bihar state is its speciality. The state, once the hub of artistic treasures, has maintained its essence for ages in the form of fairs and festivals. Today in our show, we'll give you a glimpse of the multicultural state of Bihar, which is celebrating its month-long Sonpur Mela 2023, which was once considered one of the Asia's largest cattle fair in a bid to preserve its regional heritage. Let's have a look. The land of Bihar embodies a rich cultural history and civilization values. Bihar is not just a blessed region where religions like Buddhism and Jainism established and thrived, but it is also the birthplace of several remarkable individuals whose efforts and achievements have shaped the path of history. Even today, the state is striving to preserve its age-old cultural legacy through fairs and festivals. Keeping its enriching cultural and historical essence relevant in a time like today, the state of Bihar has organized its month-long annual fair, Sonpur Mela 2023, in a bid to preserve its regional heritage. Sonpur Mela is considered one of Asia's largest cattle fairs, which is organized at the confluence of two major rivers of India, Ganga and Gandak, and which takes place on the occasion of Kartik Purnima in November. For the entire month, devotees throng to the confluence of rivers to take a holy dip in Ganga and Gandak and offer prayers in the Hariharnath temple. बहुत पुरा प्राचीन मंदिर है ये चौदह हजार वर्ष पूर्व का मंदिर बना हुआ है और यहाँ हरि और हर दोनों हैं जो स्वयं ब्रह्मा का स्थापना किया हुआ है यहाँ शिवलिंग है जो शिवलिंग है नीचे उसी में नारायण का भी वास है आधा विष्णु है और आधा शिव है यहाँ जो नारायणी में जो स्नान करते हैं और वहाँ का जल जो नारायण को चढ़ाते हैं और जो जल लेकर मुख में रखते हैं वो नर जो है वो नारायण हो जाते हैं ऐसा यहाँ का प्राचीन वर्ष का नियम है और यही गजेंद्र मोक्ष हुआ था गज और ग्राग भगवान विष्णु द्वारिका से आकर के उद्धार किए थे पीपल फ्रॉम डिफरेंट कॉर्नर्स ऑफ द कंट्री एंड आउटसाइड गैदर एट दी फेयर विद देयर लव्ड वंस इन लार्ज नंबर्स टू एंजॉय दी फेस्टिविटी फैमिलीज गो टू दी टेंपल टू सीक दी ब्लेसिंग्स ऑफ दी डेटीज एंड देयर आफ्टर हेड टू दी फेयर इट इज बिलीव्ड हुएवर कम्स टू द टेंपल विद अ सिंसियर हार्ट नेवर गोस एम्प्टी हैंडेड as believers say lord vishnu often comes to the earth during the auspicious month kartik purnima ke baad kya hai na ki yahan pe ek mahine ka pura mela lagta hai ab mela ki wajah se bhi yahan pe aur aisa bolte hai na ki bhagwan vishnu ji dharti pe aate hain aur pure ek month yahan rehte hain isliye aaye not only cattle but you will find a variety of animals with their different breeds such as dogs elephants birds and camels sold at the fair the period of the commencement of the fair is not known but it is believed that the cattle fair eventually comes to the prominence during the reign of aurangzeb when the elephant trade went up sonpur was famous at the time of the 19th century when a large number of englishmen and europeans visited this place for social gatherings और 35 साल से आ रहे हैं और यह मेला सुप्रसिद्ध हरिहर छत्तर मेला विदेशों में भी प्रसिद्ध है अपने इंडिया के अलावा भी बाहर से भी लोग आते हैं पहले के अनुसार में भी में जानवरों का कुछ कमी हुई है जो जितना जानवर पहले पशु मेला के रूप में ही पशु मेला का नाम था लेकिन पहले से पशु का कुछ आना जाना कम हुआ है विद टाइम नॉट ओनली डिड बी सी द मार्केट इन्वॉल्विंग 
but how we enjoy fairs and festivals bringing joy and refreshment to our lives also got different meaning today we take pleasure in big giant rites which is one witnessed while exploring this giant fair of sonpur apart from the carnival theater delicious food thrilling rides and the trendy 360 degree selfie booth a traditional puppet show was drawing crowds as part of a government awareness initiative bahut acha laga chilla kyon rahi thi kyunki aaj first baar se chilla raha tha mera awaaz nikala aise kabhi koi jhule pe awaaz nahi nikla kya lag raha tha us samay chillate samay बस कुछ नहीं इंजॉय लिए हम लोग और क्या लगेगा लेकिन जो घूम रहा था तो नीचे ऊपर हो रहा था तो वो कैसा लग रहा था बहुत अच्छा लगा बहुत अच्छा Carnivals like Sonpur Mela are a glowing testimony of how rich and diversified India's ancient civilization remained. Also, folk tales behind such fairs personify their historical significance. Moving on, tea in India is not just a hot beverage but an emotion for the people. Moreover, it has become a symbol of culture for the country. The Indian tea industry which has gained immense popularity in recent times is today dwelling on the path to become a driving force behind the growing Indian economy. Let's take a look. Chai, also called tea in India is not just a habit for people but is a part of their everyday lives. from starting the day with a cup of tea and a newspaper to a sip of refreshment during work and from serving guests to sharing life values and creating college memories with friends chai has become an emotion for the people in a country like india chai is not just a hot beverage it's a comforting hug in a mug According to the 2023 estimates of ResearchGate, approximately two thirds of India's population regularly consume chai, with an average per capita intake of around three cups per day. Today in India, the tea industry is valued at five billion US dollar and employs around two million workers who are directly involved in tea cultivation, production, distribution, and sales. More than 80 million Indians consume tea every day. This prolific consumption demonstrates the chai's immense popularity and its status as a staple beverage. Jagdish, who has been selling tea in the Delhi University campus for around 15 years, now expresses his journey of how eventually he developed his relationship with tea and tea lovers in the campus. सब आते हैं एज के हिसाब से तो सारे भी ऑटो वाले आ रिक्शे वाले सब हैं तो अब जो जैसे आते हैं वैसे अपने चाय का सिस्टम होता है क्योंकि दस की चाय कहीं नहीं मिली अभी हमने इन लोगों को देखते हुए रिक्शे वाले अब हर आदमी पंद्रह बीस की चाय नहीं पी सकता इसलिए हमने पाँच से दस तक चाय रखी है आदमी डिवाइड करके पी सकता है एक चाय को दो मगर तो ऐसा है कि अभी कॉलेज लाइफ में सबसे ज़्यादा कुछ वो तो रिफ्रेशमेंट चाहिए होता है हर बात के लिए बोरिंग लेक्चर्स से आओ तो रिफ्रेशमेंट कुछ अच्छा हो कॉलेज में तो एक चाय तो बनती है हमेशा कुछ भी कॉलेज में फेस्ट हो तो एक चाय तो पीनी चाहिए तो वही हमारा ये ऐसा कह सकते हैं यूनियन पॉइंट है रीयूनियन पॉइंट है कि कॉलेज से निकले और एक चाय पीना मतलब ऐसा कंपलसरी है कह सकते हैं द डिमांड फॉर इंडियन टी अक्रॉस द ग्लोब इज राइजिंग कंटिन्यूसली ड्यू टू इट्स वाइड वेराइटी ऑफ टी प्रोडक्शन The price of cornberry tea which is widely produced in Darjeeling in West Bengal is approximately 50 US dollar per kg and is in huge demand in foreign countries. Today the annual consumption of tea in India has reached 1.2 billion kilograms and this increasing demand for tea has brought forth many startups in the country. Chaios MBA Chai Wala Chai Story Chai Point The growing love for tea among Indians is proving to be a profitable business for many. This is Manish Ranjan, the owner of Chai Thela, one of the top 5 best tea startups in India. He has studied hotel management and has worked in many big hotels before actually getting into the market. And Chai Thela was his first startup. 
When Manish took over the company in 2019, the company was a loss-making venture. But today, the tea stall has an annual turnover of rupees seven crores and has around 20 outlets across the country. Chai Thala is a such a brand that the middle class caters to the middle class. हमारी जो प्राइसिंग है जो वैल्यू फॉर मनी जो हमारी चाय शुरू हो जाती है फोर्टी रुपीज़ से शुरू होकर सेवेंटी एटी रुपीज़ में ख़त्म हो जाती है तो जो मैक्सिमम जो मास बोलते हैं कैटर कैटरिंग करना जो मिडिल क्लास है मिडिल क्लास को हम कैटर करने के लिए हमारा ब्रांड मतलब सबसे सूटेबल था क्योंकि जो चायोज है या अदर ब्रांड्स हैं दे आर हाई प्राइस में वो चाय बेचते हैं तो उनकी क्लाइंटल डिफरेंट है मेन मकसद एम्प्लॉयमेंट भी था कि लोगों को मैं ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा एम्प्लॉय एम्प्लॉयमेंट दूँ ये मेरा सोच ये भी था India's Assam state which is situated in the northern eastern part of the country is famous for its tea plantations and production of various types of tea. Assam is a prominent tea cultivation state that produces 55% of the tea in the country. Apart from Assam there are many other states like West Bengal, Nagaland, Tripura, Meghalaya, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Tamil Nadu and Kerala. The hard working tribal communities there work day and night to make this massive production and consumption possible. Purity ki agar aap baat kare aajkal everyone wants to have something jo body mein jaye to uske benefits ho jaise antioxidants hain health benefits hain jitni bhi cheeze hain आज हर आदमी चाहता है उनकी स्किन ग्लो करे उनके हेयर अच्छे रहे उनकी बॉडी अच्छी रहे हेल्थ इज बिकम टॉप प्रायरिटी तो ये दार्जिलिंग चाय की सबसे बड़ी खासियत क्या है वो जो आपकी बॉडी में एंटी ऑक्सीडेंट जो चीज़ें जाती हैं उससे बढ़िया चीज़ हो नहीं सकती है तो वो बेस्ट क्वालिटी प्योरेस्ट फॉर्म में ऑर्गेनिक वे में बेसिकली आपकी बॉडी में नेक्टर जा रहा है दैट इज़ वॉट इज़ दार्जिलिंग टी Today India's tea industry has become not only a major source of revenue but is also generating foreign exchange. The tea and its excellent packaging have fueled the growth of this massive chai industry. According to data from Indian Trade Portal, India's total tea export during the year 2021 to 22 was 201 million kilograms. India exports tea to more than 25 countries across the world. Russia, Iran, the United Arab Emirates, America, Britain and Germany are some of the top countries which import tea from India. We need more and more markets even in non-conventional areas if one can popularize tea what better option than that. So uh, it's a healthy sign and one if we can convert uh, a, a place or geographical area where we can where tea is not popular and we can uh, we can uh, through our different marketing policies or different uh, ways and means one can popularize tea it, it provides an additional market. The enormous scope and complexity of the tea industry that goes along with it represents the lasting importance of chai in Indian culture. In the face of change, chai has the potential to endure as a staple beverage and a source of income for generations to come. And now, a roundup of some of the major stories that made news recently. A diamond merchant created a Ram Mandir temple themed necklace in India's diamond city Surat to give to the Hindu temple being constructed in northern Ayodhya town. The necklace designed on the lines of the Ram Mandir also has bejeweled idols of Hindu lord Ram, his brother Lakshman, wife goddess Sita and the Hindu monkey god Hanuman. The intricate necklace design consists of 5000 American diamonds and 2 kilograms of silver. and took 40 artisans over 35 days to make as per Kaushik Kakadiya the director of Rasesh Jewel Store a grand temple of Lord Ram worshiped by millions of Hindus will open in January in northern India at a site believed to be his birthplace the site in Ayodhya where the temple construction is nearing completion was bitterly contested for decades with both Hindus and Muslims laying claim to it Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and President Draupadi Murmu welcomed Oman's head of state Sultan Haitham bin Tariq Al Said with a ceremonial welcome for his first state visit to India. Modi and Haitham led the delegation level talks and announced the India Oman vision, a partnership for the future to bolster ties and mutually agreed on 10 different sectors between the two countries. 
Hetham arrived in India for a three-day state visit. Hetham met India's Foreign Minister Subramanyam Jay Shankar in New Delhi later in the day to discuss key aspects of India-Oman strategic partnership. India, a country well known for its cultural diversity and unique traditions from all across the world, has its own set of values and beliefs that are drawn from the scriptures and the teachings of scholars and learned individuals such as Sufi saints. In this spirit, today in our show, we'll take you to the Darga of Sufi saint Hazrat Abul Hasan Varsi Katra Sahab Khan in Itawa, Uttar Pradesh, which has become a common pilgrimage site for people from different religious backgrounds and ethnicities. Let's take a look. Itawa, once an active hub during the freedom movement in Uttar Pradesh, has now become one of the epicenters of communal harmony in India. Recently, the city commemorated the 99th annual Urs of the Sufi saint Hazrat Abul Hassan Barzi Katra Sahab Khan at the Holy Shrine. The three-day Urs drew people from all walks of life, regardless of their religious identity, to the shrine to offer their gratitude towards the revered Sufi saint. यहाँ हिंदू भी आते हैं, यहाँ सिख भी आते हैं, और यहाँ पारसी भी आते हैं, और ये वो दर्शकाह है जो नेशनल इंडिकेशन की एक मिसाल है, और आज देश में सबसे बड़ी जरूरत है वो सुविधाम की है, और मैं तो एक बात एक बात कहता हूँ कि अगर देश को बचाना है, तो सुविधाम को सामने लाना होगा। तमाम जितनी भी मदारिस हैं आज उस मदरसों के अंदर अगर हम सुविधाम पढ़ाएं अगर हम सुविधाम की पढ़ाई को लागू कर दें तो देश जो है एक नई रोशनी की तरफ एक नई चिराग की तरफ चल पड़ेगा। It is said that the prayers offered with sincere hearts never go in vain and the devotees are rewarded with their wishes fulfilled. Believers also say that the Saint Abul Hasan Varsi witnessed the presence of the messenger Muhammad Sahib with his open eyes, to which the devotees also visited in remembrance of Muhammad. The shrine of Sufi saints is considered an absolute emblem of communal harmony as people visit and seek blessings together without discrimination. <laughs> और हमारे दादा के जवाने से आ रहे हैं और हम ना के हमारे भाई भी बहन सब तालुकात रखते हैं इधर से आए हुए हैं और जो इधर जो मोहब्बत जो है वो कहीं आपको नहीं दिखेगी। Sufi shrines and dargahs have always been common destinations of pilgrimage for all religions. The key lessons of Sufism, such as unity and togetherness among the various communities, are followed even today and will be followed religiously in the times to come. And now we bring you some of the stories from the recent developments and happenings from around the world in our section of World in Focus. After the 2011 Great East Japan earthquake, the evacuation orders in the Fukushima prefecture towns of Okuma and Nami were partially lifted. The new buildings are being built and the residents are back. Jfudo or the Japan Food Product Overseas Promotion Center has appointed Rebecca Wilson Lee, a researcher to study Japan's culture and tradition. I'm here at Manavia Yumino Mori School to learn about this wonderful project which just started in August this year. Now Fukushima is rebuilding an unparalleled community in Japan after overcoming tragedy. Foreign viewers of Japan can easily identify it. The Tokyo Metropolitan Government focuses on creating a city that is safe and secure. In particular, to shield locals from the disastrous water and flood, Tokyo Met created a water reservoir pond and widened the river. Concrete pavement began to cover modern cities in the 1980s. It sparked regular water disasters in the city. Large-scale treatment was initiated as a result of unpleasant past experiences. Typhoon strikes Japan in the summer. It brings with it river flooding and residential inundation. 
after the construction of the underground big water reservoir pond water flood damage decreased distinctively out of 28 underground water reservoir ponds more than 20 reservoirs worked to absorb flood water and prevent disaster however citizen cooperation helps to maintain a green environment and prevent flooding from water 758 tanks are positioned to store rainfall in the Katsushika district to prevent flooding. It is known as a miniature dam and can hold 26000 tons of water. アマウイズ活用っていうのはやはり区民レベルであの進めていかなければならないかなというふうに思っておりまして、すみなく多くのまあ区民の方にアマウイズタンクをご家庭に設置していただいて、まあ普段使いで使っていただいているというところがございます。Reserved water is utilized to keep a green environment in daily life. Sanitary water comes from preserved rain water. It is developed by administrative leadership and citizen cooperation. Tokyo Metropolitan has a large following of both domestic and foreign travelers. Tokyo Metropolitan Police takes into account the safety and security of its citizens and visitors regularly. And lastly, we'll take you to the Shimla city of Himachal Pradesh, which recently celebrated its age-old regional fair, the Fair of Anokhi Dali. The fair, organized in support of the local public, was an effort to indulge and aware youth of their traditional roots. Let's have a look. The shimmering city of Shimla, also called the Queen of Hills, is nestled in the lush green foothills of the Himalayas. For centuries, Himachal's Shimla has preserved its beauty in a form of nature and age-old tradition by organizing festivals with the support of locals. Recently, the city organized a two-day Thoda fair, also called the Fair of Anokhi Dali or Olive Tree at Jubarhatti, Shimla. with the help of villagers in a bid to promote its centuries old sport of arrow and bow it is believed that historically there was only one tree of this variety to which people offered prayers to the hindu deity narsingha through the auspicious olive tree ye परंपरा जो है तो बहुत पुरानी है ये मेला जो है तो हमने अपने बुजुर्गों से सुना है 122 वर्षों से आयोजित किया जा रहा है और इस ठोटा परंपरा का जो है तो नरसिंह भगवान से जुड़ा हुआ है ये जो मेला नौखी डाली पड़ा है एक ये जो जंगली जैतून होता है उसका पौधा है तो बुजुर्गों को उन्होंने इसको अनोखी डाली नाम दे दिया कि क्योंकि इसका कोई पता नहीं चला तो इन्होंने अनोखी डाली दे दिया तो इसी पेड़ में जो है तो नरसिंह भगवान जी का वास था जिस वजह से इसका नाम अनोखी डाली पड़ा Traditionally, with the musical drums, youth and elders in the rural villages, with their arrows and bows, would come to small grounds, dancing and singing songs to please the deity. as these acts were believed to be important in religious ceremonies of local deities even today thoda party gathers to offer prayer and a procession leads towards the ground where the players start hitting arrows at a person one by one as a part of the sport The sport is an effort aiming to educate and aware the youth of the festival's historical significance. As it is said, the traditional bow and arrow fair was popular during the Mahabharat period. Sir, ये जो खेल है इसका तो कोई इतिहास नहीं कि कितना पुराना है, लेकिन ये कौरवों और पांडवों से लेकर खेलता आया। धीरे-धीरे लोग तो होता जा रहा है, क्योंकि अगर इसको खेल के माध्यम से आप देखें तो ये बहुत एन्जॉयमेंट की चीज़ है और पब्लिक का भी बहुत सहयोग रहता है इसमें। और हम हमारी पीढ़ियों से अभी हमारी भी क्या उम्र है हमारी पीढ़ियों से हम कहना चाहते हैं कि इसमें बढ़ चढ़ के अपना सहयोग करें बढ़ चढ़ के सहयोग करें इवेंट्स लाइक दीज आर क्रूशियल फॉर द कल्चरल डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द कंट्री दिस आल्सो प्रोवाइड्स एन अपॉर्चुनिटी फॉर द यंगर जनरेशन टू एक्सप्लोर एंड अंडरस्टैंड देयर रीजनल कल्चर टू प्रिजर्व देम That's all we have for you this week. Your comments and suggestions are important to us. Do give us your feedback on myindia@anin.com. I'm your host Pratiksha Mishra and it's a goodbye from the entire production team. Mm -hmm.